Hi, good afternoon. Dial Thomas here again from the Love March Movement. You know, we're fasting every single Wednesday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We're dedicated to going hard before the Lord, concerning sexual purity and the family. Because strong family make a strong nation, right? That's what the Iron Man says right there. Strong family. Yo! That's what we're defending, right? And in focus this week, right? Because we, we, we try to focus on a particular topic. We talk about it a bit. Then we're going to be praying about three points and three people, right? But before we go into the, the, the points, um, just wanted to share a few thoughts. Thoughts, right as I was praying asking Lord what should we pray about this week what is it that you want to emphasize um, I was led to the book of Nehemiah Nehemiah chapter 4 I'm just going to read a couple of verses from it I'm going to look at Nehemiah chapter 4 verses 1 to 4 right so Nehemiah understood that the walls of his country had been burnt with fire and broken down destroyed his heart sunk because that is a sad a sad place to be as a nation when your walls no longer are around with you where there's no protection, where the enemy can just come in and just walk through and just don't have to people them, right? So his heart really sunk inside of him. He got permission from the king to go back to his people, right, to um, Jerusalem to rebuild the wall. And, you know, that was granted. And God gave him favor as he went, right? As he prayed continually before the Lord, the Lord gave him favor. And so we're at verse 4, we're at chapter 14 now. It says, when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became angry and was greatly incensed. He ridiculed the Jews, and in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, What are those feeble Jews doing? Will they restore their wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring the stones back to life from those heaps of rubble, burned as they are? And Tobiah the Ammonite, who was at the side, said, What they are building, if even a fox climb on it? He would break down their wall of stones, right? Um, so, I mean, so they're, they're really teasing, they're really upset at the fact that the people of God are rebuilding the wall around their country, right? Verse 6, so, so we, rebuild, we, we rebuild the wall until all, it, um, all of it reached half its height. For the people worked with all their heart. But when Sambalat and Tobiah and the Arabs and Ar Ammonite and the men of Ashdod heard that the repairs to the Jer Jerusalem's wall had gone ahead. And that the gaps were being closed. They were very angry. They all plotted together to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it. Right? But we prayed to our God and posted a guard day and night to meet this threat. Right? Meanwhile, the people in Judah said, The strength of the laborers is giving out and there is so much trouble that we cannot rebuild the wall. Also, our enemy said, before they know it or see us, we will be right there among them and will kill them and put an end to the work. Then the Jews who lived near them came and told us ten times over, wherever you turn, they will attack us. Wherever they turn, they will attack us. Therefore, I stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall at the exposed places, posting them by families with their swords, spears and bows. After I looked things over, I stood up and said to the nobles, the officials, the rest of the people, Don't be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives and your homes. When our enemies heard that we were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, we all returned to the wall, each um, to his own work. From that day on, very importantly, from that day on, half of the men did the work, while the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows, and armor. The officers posted themselves behind all the people of Judah who were re um, rebuilding the wall. Those who carried materials did their work in one hand and held a weapon in the other. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked. But the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. Now there's some really really powerful strategic spiritually strategic points right because you know as people will understand that this battle is not physical right but it is spiritual which manifests into the physical so it's not just as a physical battle i should say right because there is an element of debate and there's there's an element where we're dealing with people and where we are um interfacing with different philosophies and worldviews but it is really a spiritual war which manifests um 
in the physical realm, right? But here is Nehemiah in a similar situation like how we are in Jamaica right now with walls which have been broken down, walls which have been, um, you know, sections of them have been punched out in terms of the protection of our children, in terms of the... Um, the, the mindset of our people with this Ghana bungle mentality, all of these are breaches in the wall of the family, right? First of all, it should grieve us that our the family structure um, is looking like this, right? And we should be pushed to respond. This is so important, right? Primarily the push um, for us to respond, right? And you will see, as you look at this, you know, Nehemiah chapter 4, you will see that the different strategies that were put in place, you know, they, they were very... Um, antagonistic persons around them are very antagonistic. Their own people, right? Just like Christians telling us right now that love march movement, you're not gonna do this, you're not gonna do that, you know this and you know that, right? There are persons who always speak all kind of negativity, right? But we listen to the criticism and we we ask the Lord, what would you have us do? And we put things in place, right? Same kind of thing is happening with Nehemiah. So he puts the guard there to meet the threats, right? It is important to meet the threat at the gate. Right, because you don't want them to come in, right? So, um, the, the, the ministry of the Love March Movement, the goal, the vision of the Love March Movement is twofold. It is to protect and to restore. It is to defend and to rebuild, right? We are committed to faithfully pulling that through, right? That is our heart, that is our goal for this country, to defend and protect family and sexual purity in the country and to rebuild and restore family and sexual purity in the country. Same kind of thing happening with Nehemiah. He realized that, look, there's an offensive side where persons are going to try and come and either break down the wall further or they're going to come in with all kind of messed up philosophies and, and, and destroy the people. Right? So we need to stand at the gate. We need soldiers equipped at the gate. Even the persons who, as they lay the martyr, as they put up the, the bricks, right? they also need to be equipped to stand so that is restoring and defending at the same time that's exactly what we're looking at in this passage right and i want to encourage us to continue to stand right um i love i love the verse that said the wall was going up and it was going up very quickly even above schedule because the people worked at it with all their heart now there has been um a, a really nice um, statistic in the paper where I realized that 90 odd percent of Jamaicans have decided that look we don't want to remove this law and you know we're really happy about that but they I just want to say there are other laws as well that we need to have an opinion about right we need to check out what's going on with these other laws about prostitution the changes in the sexual offenses act right how will it affect the family structure right while we're happy about the stance um, regarding the buggy line, it's something that we have worked hard for. We understand that this is definitely not the end of, of the road of, of what we're doing in defending the family and, and rebuilding the family. There's so much more to do, right? So quickly now, the three points, I'm just going to read them off. I know I've spent a lot of time there, and there's so much more to get from this rich passage of scripture, right? But three points. The first point, pray that the people of Jamaica would not just be satisfied that we do not want the burglar law to be removed, but that we would rebuild the family structure entirely, right? With our hearts, with all our hearts, stopping fatherlessness, um, strengthening marriages, hating pornography, protecting our children in the education system, right? Standing up against abortion, standing up against um, prostitution, right? And loving everyone while still holding a standard. That's very important, right? That's the truth in love right there, right? And that our hands will be strengthened. Let's continue to pray that our hands will be strengthened, right? Because it is important. Again, we must both prevent holes and invasions, right through the wall and you know and we must also rebuild the wall right so it's defend and um it is protect and restore protect and restore right um so the second prayer is then that pray that we as as jamaicans right under god would guide this nation into its prophetic destiny to increase in beauty right and that we will be given the strategy as we rebuild the wall and as we defend the wall. Because you want to be able to do it just like how Nehemiah, just beautifully how, how it was just laid out right there with Nehemiah. Um, and you can read the different challenges that he, ha that he had as he had to do both things, right? Um, right, well, let's pray for strategy. Thirdly, let's pray that the majority and the logic of the common good will not just reign in the polls, but let it reign in the joint select committee proceedings because guys there's still a chance that even though 90 percent of jamaicans want this thing you know that they might just overturn it in the joint select committee because of some other reason i don't, I don't know because they're convinced of of 
by, by a random skit that is based on no evidence. I mean, something like that happened with the whole abortion debate. So, um, let's be praying about the joint select committee proceedings, right? Let's pray that the majority, right, and the logic of the common good, which is important, right? The common good logic is important, right? And I pray that that would reign and that the Spirit of God would reign in the proceedings of the joint select committee. For the three people, let's pray for Senator Mark Golding, who is one of the leaders, Minister of Justice, one of the leaders in the Joint Select Committee proceedings. Secondly, pray for Maurice Tomlinson, who we know is up to something, um, trying to break down somewhere, somewhere. Let's pray for him. And he, even as he tries to break down walls of the family around the Caribbean, around the world, that he would come into contact with Jesus Christ, right? Because Jesus loves him and we love him. Let's pray that he will be saved. Thirdly, let's pray for Dane Lewis, who is the leader of Jamaicans for lesbians, all sexuals, and gays. Pray that he would also come into contact with Jesus Christ, turn his life around. Let us rebuild the wall and restore the family. Let's defend, let's protect, and let us restore and rebuild at the same time as possible. In Jesus' name, as he empowers us to stand, let us fast and pray and work with all our hearts for the kingdoms of this world shall be the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. This is the time. And we are the people who are ushering Jamaica into its destiny, right? Let's do it. And with all our hearts before the Lord for his glory and his honor. Peace.